This video is brought to you by Too Long. That's the official TLDR newspaper we've made and which is available to order right now. Economists sometimes say there are four types of countries in the world. Developed, underdeveloped, Japan and Argentina. Argentina's economy has been stuck in a dramatic high inflation boom-bust cycle for most of modern history, fueled by excessive spending by successive Argentinian administrations. The latest politician promising radical solutions for the Argentinian economy is Javier Millet, a self-described anarcho-capitalist who wants to cut government spending by over 50% and dollarize the entire economy. Despite underperforming in the first round, on Sunday Millet won the second and final round of the presidential election, with around 56% of the vote. Millet defeated incumbent economy minister and Peronist Sergio Massa, who actually beat him in the first round. In his victory speech, Millet made it clear he intended to pursue his radical agenda, dancing on stage and telling the crowd that there's no room for gradual measures. So in this video we're going to have a look at Argentina's unique economy and politics, the recent presidential election and whether Millet's radical plans actually stand a chance of working. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So before we get into the results, a bit of context. Because Argentine politics is pretty unique. Argentina's military has constantly interfered in its politics, with 12 attempted coups since 1930, six of which were successful. Throughout the 20th century, Argentina swung between democracy and military rule, and only truly became a democracy in 1983, with the election of Raúl Alfonsín. The only real constant in Argentinian politics has been Peronism, a political ideology inspired by Argentinian leader Juan Perón, who was the leader of the Judicialist Party and President of Argentina from 1946 to 1955. Perón was immensely popular with the Argentine working class, but was ousted and then exiled in a military coup in 1955. Perón was re-elected president in 1973 once Argentina returned to democracy, before dying in 1974. Perón was succeeded by his third wife, Isabel Perón, who was, yep, you guessed it, ousted by a military coup in 1976. Nonetheless, Peronism and its vehicle, the Judicialist Party, have remained a powerful political force in Argentina, keeping power for 24 of the 38 years since 1983. As an ideology, Peronism is hard to define. It's sort of a vague blend of Argentine nationalism and laborism. But over the years, Peronists have swerved between radically opposed policies, and in 2003, the Judicialist Party split over a disagreement between its economically left and right factions. And every presidential election since has had at least two nominally Peronist candidates. Peronism hasn't been great for Argentina's economy, which has been stuck in a dramatic high inflation boom bust loop since really the 1970s. That's why in 2015 Argentina elected a non Peronist president, Mauricio Macri, leader of the centre right coalition Cambimos. Originally, it looked like Macri was making solid progress. After floating the peso, reducing subsidies and liberalising capital flows, inflation subsided and the economy started growing. In late 2017 though, under pressure from opposition groups and on the back of a mediocre set of midterm election results, Macri pressured the central bank into loosening its inflation target from 12 to 15% and cutting interest rates to facilitate more government spending. Investors lost confidence, the peso collapsed, and Argentina re-entered its boom-bust cycle. Macri then lost the 2019 election, when he was soundly beaten by Peronist and Judicialist Party presidential candidate Alberto Fernandez. Somewhat unsurprisingly, given the Peronists' track record and the global macroeconomic situation, Fernandez and the Peronists haven't done much better. Inflation has risen to over 140%, a recession looms and the country can't pay back the $43 billion it currently owes to the IMF. With Fernandez's approval rating in the dumps and the centre-right Cambimos movement discredited by Macri's failures, a void opened up in Argentine politics, which was duly filled by libertarian anarcho-capitalist Javier Millet. 
Millet has both an iconoclast policy platform and personality. He lives with five mastiffs, four of which are named after famous economists, and refuses to deny rumours that his dogs advise him on politics. He called the Pope a leftist son of a bitch, and his running mate is basically an apologist for Argentina's military junta. He's anti-abortion, pro-guns, and said last year that he was in favour of setting up a legal market for organs. His campaign took a wobble last month when he apparently started hearing voices live on TV, and he also got in trouble for explicitly praising Margaret Thatcher, who's not all that popular in Argentina. In terms of economic policy, he basically wants to do two things. Gut the Argentinian state, and then dump Argentina's currency, the peso, and replace it with the US dollar. Let's start with his plans to gut the state. Successive administrations have expanded Argentina's vast but ineffective state, and public spending has grown from 26% of GDP in 2000 to 38% today. Millet wants to bring that down to 15% and run a balanced budget in his first year by scrapping all electricity and gas subsidies, getting rid of 10 of Argentina's 18 government ministries by privatising all of Argentina's 34 state companies, replacing infrastructure spending on public works with a private bidding system, and scrapping privileged pensions to judges, diplomats and presidents. In the government ministries left standing, Millet wants more competition, including a voucher system for education and healthcare. Once he's done this, Malay then promises to reduce or scrap most of Argentina's taxes. Millet's plan to dollarise the Argentinian economy is essentially a consequence of Millet's belief that Argentina's central bank, which he's described as the worst thing in the universe, can't be trusted not to print pesos to facilitate inflation-inducing overspending. To remedy this, Millet wants to ditch the peso and just do everything in dollars. Now, this isn't impossible, not least because many Argentinians already use dollars to prevent their savings being eroded by currency depreciation. But there are some obvious problems. First, Millet doesn't have a majority in Congress, which means he might struggle to get his more controversial policy into legislation. Second, Argentina doesn't have enough dollar reserves to ditch the peso, and it's unclear where Millet plans on getting them from. Millet himself admits he needs about $40 billion in reserves to dollarize, but the central bank's net foreign exchange reserves are currently at negative $1.5 billion. Millet's advisers have talked about taxing dollar savings or even using shares in the state oil firm as collateral to borrow dollars, but these are pretty ambitious. Third, while dollarization might be appealing, it has its own risks. If a government can't reduce its deficits, it has to default, and because they're unable to set interest rates, dollarized states are at the mercy of the Federal Reserve. Dollarized states also run the risk of bank runs if their central bank starts running low on reserves. But perhaps the main problem is that history suggests the Argentine electorate lacks the stomach for the required structural reforms. Moving to the dollar will essentially require de facto devaluing of the peso, which, along with the abolition of energy subsidies, will probably mean more inflation in the short term. Argentinians might well balk at Millet's policies when the short-term costs become apparent, and he risks suffering a similar fate to Macri. If you want more from TLDR and want to support our journalism, consider picking up a copy of our newspaper, Too Long. This is a one-off physical newspaper we've been working on over the last few months, which includes 32 pages of analysis and explainers from the TLDR team on everything from Ukraine and Gaza to the state of the French and German governments, or the upcoming elections in the UK, US, and around the world. It's not just us either. We have a full interview with creator and journalist Johnny Harris that people who buy the newspaper can also watch via a special QR code. Plus, there's articles from a ton of other creators, including JJ McCullough, Search Party, Sophia Smith Gaylor, and many more. This really has been a very exciting project for us to work on, and hopefully you can already see all the work we've put into it, even the TLDR-themed crossword. So if you want to pick up a copy and help fund our journalism on YouTube as we head into 2024, then the link to the store is in the description. Plus, you can get 20% off your purchase this week only by using code TLDRGLOBAL at checkout. And with a limited quantity available, if you do want one, I'd order soon, especially if you want it before Christmas.
As always, thanks so much for your support, and I hope you like this silly but genuinely very good project as much as we do. Thank you.